Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Brett Foster, treasurer here at St. Paul's, and I have a couple of narrative pages I'd like to share with you on this video that will give you a good idea of how 2021 landed and how our 2022 budget looks. But before I get there, I'd like to share how you can find all the financial reports and some high level themes. First, if you're interested in the detailed account views, the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow, trended bank and investment balances, please follow the QR code shown here to access a folder full of fun. Second, high level themes. As you'll see on the next page, 2021 saw expenses return to pre-pandemic levels. And with the much talked about inflationary pressures, I believe costs are positioned to expand into 2022 and beyond, especially in the areas of utilities, maintenance, repairs, compensation, and healthcare. But an even more important theme is that we have a robust and engaged and generous parish that rises to the occasion year after year. In 2021, pledge income exceeded expectations. And here in 2022, we continue to see pledges come in to help close our projected deficit. But let's take a closer look. Here we can see that we were close to balancing the budget in 2021, but ultimately ended up with a $6,000 deficit. Income was $7,000 better than budget, but expenses finished $13,000 worse. However, if we exclude the $50,000 PPP grant that we received in 2020, this is our best result in at least five years. So I believe things continue to move in the right direction. Some key highlights include pledges ending up $19,000 favorable to budget and the general and special collections finished $13,000 lower. Income from our special events, concerts, and things exceeded expectations by $5,000, but there were several unexpected maintenance and facility repairs which diluted our net revenue from the preschool rental. Staffing costs came in low, lower than budget, which you can see, and this is due to medical leave, the choir, and the children and youth, but between inflation and a return to in-building activities, administrative costs and utilities were back to pre-pandemic levels and unfavorable budget. Lastly, while it does not appear in our operating budget, I would be remiss if I did not comment on the favorable market returns for our trust and investment accounts, which I will switch to now. This is one of the pages that you can find in that finance folder full of fun. Our bank accounts are at the top and investment accounts are at the bottom. We leave enough money in our main checking and money market account to be comfortable to cover payroll and other predictable operating expenses. But we transfer our excess into our unrestricted agency account at the DIT, uh, which you can see we did in 2001. Adjusted for these cash transfers, our collective account saw an 11% return last year. Now on to 2022. Every year poses some challenge to preparing a balanced budget, and 2022 is no exception. In the prepared materials in the folder, you'll see uh, there and here that the 2022 budget appears to be balanced. However, this is being achieved by the vestry approving to contribute $11,000 from the operating fund reserve. Otherwise, we would be showing an $11,000 deficit budget here. But the main reason that the vestry is willing to take this approach is to help offset the cost of hiring a full-time children, youth, and family minister position. It is believed that this will be a multi-year transformative investment in the future of our parish. Pledges are poised to once again rise significantly compared to the previous year, up 7%, and approach our goal of $400,000. We continue to see the much needed pledge responses come in uh, even today, so thank you for that. You can also see that the budget estimates that space, in, space, income, space rental income will continue, to at, continue up to the pre-pandemic levels and that our new fundraising committee will also make a big impact. The numbers show that we are careful spenders, committed to our staff, 
and, and generous in returning um, over 15% of our total income outside of the parish. More than half of the money that we give back is in the form of our assessment to the diocese, but the remainder is in the form of grants, GBIO membership fees, and clergy discretionary. In, in line with the increases we've seen in pledge income, our MOP grant pool has risen nearly 75% over the past five years to over $36,000. In aggregate, the money that we give back to the community in 2022 will exceed $100,000, a first in our history. This is not always easy to do because it restricts potential investments that we could make to more directly benefit our parish and staff, but despite our challenges, it is a position that we continue to uphold. This is one of the many things that makes St. Paul's who we are. In closing, I want to share that after three years, 2022 will be my, be my last as treasurer. It has been an honor serving the parish, and I am wholeheartedly committed to a strong finish. Over the next few months, we will be seeking individuals interested in serving on a finance committee working group. There are a myriad of activities that this group can undertake, from administrative to strategic, and all experience levels, including none, are welcome. I'll be distributing more details around this shortly. One of the more important activities for this group will be the search for the next treasurer. If participating in this working group or acting as treasurer is something that may be of interest to you, please feel free to give me a call. Again, thank you, and I hope to see you all soon.